But if we look at that, Anki is taking an average 27 credit hours at OSSM average, give or take. But the average college student takes 15, even though OSSM prides itself on college level courses. Looking at that number alone, that's crazy, dude. Like, I don't know yeah, how like, you maintain your sanity. Some people took even more classes and even harder classes. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. It's insane. It's insane. And they wonder why I, we all want to drop out every, like, day. <laughs> yeah. Why is my mental health terrible? I wonder. Welcome back to From C204. I'm Anthony Wynn, and today I'm talking to August Lombardi, class of 2020. How are you doing today, August? I'm Anthony. Uh, that's good to hear. It's been a while since we have you on the channel. Like, I think it was last year. So is yeah. this the third one now? Yeah, third one. Wow, I'm like a reoccurring guest. How crazy is that? Crazy. <laughs> so today we'll be talking about OSSM's classes. OSSM's, uh, you know, people call it a uh, nerd prison because it's academically rigorous and the students have to live there. But today's episode focus is mainly focused on the academic rigor and the type of classes that are offered there. OSSM prides itself in having college level classes taught by faculties with doctorate degrees, master's degrees, who are experts in their field. You know, like they could teach at universities. And some already have, some already taught at universities, and they're choosing to teach here to help the promising high school students of Oklahoma, per se, you know, all that jazz. So, OSSM offers several classes in several different fields, such as mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, et cetera, et cetera, catering to a lot of different tastes. If you want to go medical, they have biology, chemistry. If you want to do computer science, they have computer science, math, physics, all that jazz. And although we won't be going in depth into every single class in this episode, that'll be reserved in a document in the description where we will have a list. We'll be talking about the general recommended classes, per se. So, uh, OSSM Day requires students to take seven classes a semester, minimum. There are exceptions. For example, the mentorship program, they have a, it's six classes in a mentorship, right, August? Yes. Yes. So usually it's seven a semester. That's a bare minimum, but you can take eight. And I know people who've taken nine, but they're psychopaths. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I guess it depends on the classes you take as well. Also, yeah. if you want to learn more about the mentorships, go check out the mentorships episode. Chilling. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah that, that might, we might re I might re-record that, although it could be, could be improved a little, but that's <laughs> a little the future, guys. <laughs> So let's do a general rundown of all the classes, like at least the required classes. So math, you know, it's in the name, science and mathematics, right? So OSSM, they make you take four math classes, or one per semester. So you can't do like two one semester, then one one, and then your last semester you have no math. You can't dodge that. So at least one minimum math every semester. So generally, the typical starting point of OSSM juniors is pre-calc three. That's what I've heard to be the averages, but typically the starting areas, at least in general, are pre-calc two, which is algebra two, pre-calculus three, which is trig, uh, pre-calc, you know, trig, yeah. Uh, calc one and calc two. Uh, calc one, calc two, calculus, all that jazz. Similar to the A, B, and B, C, A, P calculus exams. And then from there, you do four math courses respectively. You have to do calculus two before you graduate though. Do keep that in mind. So you can't start in pre-calc two, and do pre-calc two, three, calc one, and then jump to something else. You have to finish pre-calc two before you graduate, right? Calc two. Yeah. So the typical path is just doing four, just four in a row from the uh, progressively difficulty. So let's say if you're in pre-calc two, like I mentioned before, two, three, calc one, calc two, or pre-calc three, like August, for example, Augustine, uh, pre-calc three, calc one, calc two, and then one of the special, special quote unquote math classes, you can go from there, 
such as multivariate differential equations and probability and statistics. Uh, you took differential equations, right, Alex? Yeah, I do. I, I didn't take a multi. <laughs> I remember. I remember talking you out of taking multi so we could do diffy together. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, generally the way the path is, uh, you generally go in a sense like you know one. It's like a SQL class. You have like PC three after PC two, and then Calc one after PC three, and then Calc two after Calc one. But after that, that's when your options really expand. Especially, uh, you ha you have like all the different math classes to choose from at that point, and it what what you take after that is up to you. For example. I know linear algebra is extremely important to comp people who want to major in computer science. So because I want to major in that field, I took linear algebra uh, after my calculus two class. And for example, uh, I understand that people might not be as focused on math after they finish calc two. So they don't want to do too in depth. They don't want to keep on going that path. And for example, OSSM offers probability and statistics as an option because that is practical for almost every field. Statistics is very, uh, prevalent. So I understand several of my friends who work in the medical, who want to work in the medical field, took probability and statistics after Calc 2 instead of, for example, multivariate calculus. That's true. Also, it, I, heard it, I heard it was easier. Uh, yes, uh, I've heard from several others that it is less rigorous in terms of like the amount of homework you get. It's still work. You still have to work. And additionally, you still have a, prop stat, a probability and statistics Saturday exam, which is you know, some people might not like that, but it's like a give and take. You get an easier class, but you have a Saturday exam, take that as you will. Yes. And in terms of the other higher math options, they have uh, at least past Calc 2. I've mentioned it uh, here and there so far, but it's like multi multivariate calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, the uh, real and complex analysis, and all that jazz. I know several people who've already, who've taken those classes at OSSM because they have come here with prior, for example, prior calculus credit from the AP exam and the like. Uh, secondly, uh, physics. So physics is another program that OSSM known to excel at. Yeah. Uh, typically, almost every junior starts in general physics. That's similar to a typical introductory college, like an non-calculus-based al physics class, algebra-based physics. Very similar to the AP Physics 1 exam. Is that right, August? Uh, yes. Yeah. And it covers a, a broad basis for everything from your mechanics. For example, I throw a ball, where does, like, how far does it go? To your magnetism, you know, rubbing two magnets together, look at electric field and all that jazz to your other days, like uh, light waves, thermodynamics and light waves. Uh, it's a general feel of everything to make sure you get a broad understanding of all the physics at OSSM, that makes sense. You, you learn a lot. Now, I think it's a good physics class for all the juniors, but it is hard. It's an extremely, I'd say it's one of the hardest first semester classes you have to take at OSSM. Would you agree, August? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, the Saturday exam for that one is tough. I'd be honest. That one was brutal. Yes. Yeah, but for those uh, who already have that AP Physics 1 credit from the high school, because OSSM allows you to like uh, replace your general physics with another physics class that you already have that AP credit with things like mechanics or electricity and magnetism. And along that line, these two classes you can take after you finish general physics. Because OSSM's requirement is for you to take general physics, mechanics, electricity, and magnetism. That is the typical path. Because you have to take three before you graduate. You need to have the credit for electricity and magnetism before you graduate as well. People call electricity and magnetism the tough OSSM class. It's like the gatekeeper. Because you need to take it, and it's super hard. Right, August? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but... For the uh, people who are really interested in physics, I know several people who wanted to major in physics or some type of physics-based discipline, like engineering or OSSM. There are several other options you can take after you finish the year. For example, there are modern physics. Uh, August and I both took modern physics because we're in the engineering field. 
and we thought it was interesting. We took it together. It sounded cool. It's modern, you know, it's like modern. It's like, wow, I can flex on like other people. It's like, I took modern physics. How cool is that? And then we got flexed on by oh. Dr. Bachman. Wow. That was right up the butt. It was painful to say the least. Uh, from modern physics, though, I feel like it got like easier as a class one. It was like really hard, a little easier than really hard at the end. Would you agree? Like a little. Yeah, like something, something in the middle. It was like, because it was just uh, the concepts were sort of like expanding upon sort of what we already knew. It was like taking like the normal physics, right? And then like, you know, adding light stuff to it. Additionally, uh, there are two modern physics classes, modern physics one and two. So no one in our class took modern physics two because it wasn't offered. From what I've heard, there was not enough interest in the class because about like, what, 10 people took modern physics one out of like 80. And then yeah. not a lot of people from that 10 or so wanted to take modern physics two. So it was just not offered altogether. However, there are several other classes offered that these students could take instead of modern physics too. Think of your theoretical physics. Uh, August and I both took theoretical physics for about three weeks, and then we dropped it because we both agreed, wait, this is our last semester. Like this is weeks. not worth this. Yeah, two weeks. It's a very short time. We, we, it's our la it was our last semester of our senior year. We both agreed that it was not worth the stress. It was really, I liked the class, good concept, but it was hard. It, was it really seemed hard. interesting, right? But I just, it, everything went over my head. I was so confused from day one. Yeah, but I do respect, there's some people who did stay, and I, I have to respect it. Like, Although I, think, I did hear that it got easier over time. And then electric circuits, so that's a, where you do a bunch of like circuit stuff. Yeah. You, know, you get to that's make circuits. That's self-explanatory. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, they have long labs. That class is very long labs. Because there are also some physics classes, like the general physics, mechanics, E and M, they have their labs, but E and M, the no, electric circuit labs are known to go like super long, like longer than the, uh, the schedule says it will go. Like if it says it ends at 4.45, expect a 5.30, you know, something like that. And then you have astronomy. So astronomy, I don't know too much about astronomy, but I know it's very science, very math based. And they get to look at stars sometimes. Like the professor will love it, like go stargazing or whatever, something like that for fun. For fun. But there's one thing that is very important to mention about the OSS and physics program, and it's called doubling up, right? Oh my god! So this is for the giga chads out there, <laughs> or psychopaths who want to destroy their free time. They get comfortable. This is fun. So doubling up, let's say you start in general physics your first semester, and you, you, know, you do it your first semester, and you don't take any other physics classes, because that's a typical. You, don't, you only take one physics class at a time. So you can take the next semester mechanics and e &M simultaneously, because you have that broad foundation from general physics, but they're different enough of mechanics and e &M, like in terms of the way they're taught and material that you can take them both simultaneously and still learn both without needing the other one because yeah. you have that foundation from general physics right and isn't like a, equal to mechanics they're like two different subjects almost like yeah. entirely like a, so they like they branch off they're like, like general areas. physics mechanics you know like a little like a fork in a road you know yes uh and the reason people do that is from what I've heard from my friends, they want to get that physics out of the way so they can both take harder classes, not in the physics field, the senior year, and you know, not have to worry about e and the senior year. And you know, they could focus on their college applications as well. Or, secondary, or the second reason, they want to take harder physics classes. Because for example, modern physics, theoretical physics, they all require you to have e and under your belt. So by taking e and your junior year, second semester, you have options. You have more options to take more physics classes, and it opens up a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. However, you have to get a good grade in general physics to be given the option to double up. Like, when you request it, they usually, like, check your, their general physics grade. They talk to the professor, from what I know. And, and the professor is like, oh, yeah, he, this person is a good student. They get good grades. They will let you have that option, right? 
Because I'm yeah. not going to give someone who struggled in general physics the more stress of doing mechanics at EM at one time. It's, it's very stressful. Uh, August and I both doubled up. Well, you know, I don't. I don't remember why I doubled up. I'm not gonna lie. Me neither. I I don't know. It's just like, oh man, are other people doing it? Sounds cool. Let's go for it. What could go wrong? Uh, fifteen. About I think fifteen of our eighty or so doubled up in our class. Cause I yeah. remember because all the E and M uh the double up students were in one class. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there were any seniors in our class. Were there? Yeah, it was two sections. Yeah, two sections because the section of seniors who took E and M second semester, let's say their senior year second semester, were like in a different class from the juniors taking E and M second semester. Because most seniors take it first semester, so it's less seniors, so they can be all in one class for the second semester, e and uh, But yeah, uh, it is a good idea if you think you can handle it, because it will both like get e and out of the way and focus on college apps, and get, let you have those additional opportunities for your senior year. And to be fair, right, here's my thing about mechanics. I felt like with mechanics, there was a lot of overlap with general physics it felt very similar. They, it only just expanded upon like ideas further. But the like the base, like most of mechanics, you've already pretty much learned in general physics. But it is important to know that mechanics is calculus based. So you will be using calculus in addition to the mechanics background you learn in general physics it's for the entire mechanics class. There's a lot of calculus. It won't be too anything like crazy, crazy calculus. But you will, like, for example, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, like that, you know, and you use those concepts along the line. Same with e &M, you use calculus. Granted, it's, calculus for e &M is a lot harder than the one for mechanics. I will not lie, because e and is crazy hard. Take it as you will. But yes, but yeah, I think, Physics at OSM is really well taught. I mean, like math and physics, I think, two most well taught with like the best faculty in the whole school. And I, know, I might need to edit this out, but I personally <laughs> think so. It's great. I, I really like them both, uh, both departments. And now for the other sciences. Oh, baby. <laughs> Chemistry. This is fun. Oh, goodness. So, this is a chemistry is a tad weird at OSSM, I'm not going to lie. So you start out, let's say you start out, I'm opening up the database for a moment. Uh, you start out in general physics one, right? That is the de facto introduction to chemistry class that you will get at OSSM, is the introduction to everything. It is the foundation for everything. Funny story, August and I had the same professor for general physics, uh, general chemistry one and two. Oh, no. And it was fun. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun in that yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. That's an interpretation of fun. Yeah, it was something. I had a lot of, I had a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it's hard though. I'm not going to lie. Most people typically take chemistry their sophomore year of high school. I took it my sophomore year. Did you take it your sophomore year? Yeah, I didn't. So most people come in thinking that they have that foundation for chemistry, at least. But personally, uh, my high school before OSSM, that chemistry program was only like only barely tapped into the waters. Like, for example, what I learned that entire year at my high school chemistry was about three months into OSSM's general chemistry one course. It was like we ended at like th basic thermodynamics. I don't know what the case was for you, August. Did it go over a lot in your uh, high school? This is probably similar. I mean, I'm pretty sure mine was definitely, my, uh, high, my old high school's uh, chemistry program was probably better than yours. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's like something similar. You, I, uh, I came in with a good amount of general chemistry one, like most of it, if not all of it. And then, so you typically, after doing your general chemistry one first semester, that's what most students do, or they're placed into. You can do general chemistry two second semester, because to graduate, you need to have two chemistry credits. General chemistry one and two is a typical path. So general chemistry two is just a continuation of, you know, general chemistry one, take it as you will, you know, just more chemistry. 
more math and chemistry, all that jazz. I don't know if I can go, like go too much into detail, but that's about it, right? It's just more chemistry. Oh yeah. Uh, have you mentioned the AP? Oh, yes. So the general chemistry one and two prepares you for the ACS, first of all, the American Chemical Society exam. And your final for both chemistry one, general chemistry one and two is the ACS exam for chemistry one, chemistry two. That's stuff that they use in universities. So if you get a good score on that, you can get university credit for general chemistry one and two for you know, universities. However, an additional thing to note is that you can get general chemistry one and two credit through the AP exam. Whether you take it before OSOSEM or at or like during OSOSEM. So most people take it during the OSOSEM because it prepares you well for the AP chemistry exam. I regret not taking it, but I digress, you know. But for the people who come in with that AP chemistry credit, I know some people do. For example, uh, Northern North, I understand their students have AP chemistry available for them uh, for like 10th grade. I know several people who came in with that AP chemistry credit. They're crazy, they're crazy smart. Uh, you can take organic chemistry. Now, organic chemistry is hard, very hard, but it's an amazing class for medical school. Right? I mean, because you need it for medical school. You need it for medical school. You need school, the class, right? yeah. And you're given the option for organic chemistry one and two. I didn't take the class, but I know August did. So August, you want to go more in depth into orga, orga one and two. I did. Okay. Uh, so orgo, orgo is interesting because um, the professor who teaches it, which should, as long as he doesn't retire, it should be the same uh, professor, no matter when you take it. Um, he has an interesting teaching style. Uh, he, like, really good knowledge of organic chemistry. And, you know, if you, you know, pay attention in class and study well, you'll, you'll definitely learn a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's about it. That's all I got. Uh, and also, they have the ACS option available for them, to my knowledge, right? You have to take the ACS as your final for organic one and two? Yeah, normally, yes, but we didn't because COVID. COVID, typically. But does that pr provide uh, college credit for organic chemistry? I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm not actually sure myself. I'm not sure about the ACS. But do keep in mind, this is also very important. The ACS exams typically follow alongside the school year, right? What I mean by that is like, let's say you take general chemistry one in the fall and chemistry two in the spring. That path prepares you for the ACS exam at the end of the year. Because I believe they offer like, for example, they offer the chemistry two exam at the end of every year. And they don't, let's say you take chemistry two in the fall. I don't know if they offer it then. Because it's like a national exam to my knowledge, correct? Is that correct? I think so, yeah. So... Something very important to keep in mind is that if you want to do organic chemistry and you, like to, you want to go into medicine, I heavily recommend taking, trying to take general chemistry one your first semester of OSSEM. So it prepares you for general chemistry one in the fall, gen chem two in the spring, organic one in your senior fall, and organic two in your senior spring. That four semester path gets you your general chemistry and your organic chemistry, as well as getting you the practice with those ACS final exams. I highly recommend it. And the reason I mention this is because some students are placed into biology in the fall, and they take their chemistry, the first chemistry class in the spring, and that hinders their progress. But I would agree that it's like, you, I think it's a better idea to try to take organic chemistry starting your senior fall, but if you start general chemistry one in your junior spring, you have to do chemistry two in the fall fall your senior year. So even though you can take organic one your spring semester senior year, you can't take organic two because you've already graduated at that point. You've already done four semesters. So that's just a suggestion on my end. Right? Would you agree? Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, additionally, for those who want to take additional uh, chemistry classes, there are several other chemistry classes offered by the department for those of some. Uh, so, for example, biochemistry. <laughs> Bio biochemistry. Biochemistry, yes. Bio with uh, I believe it's Dr. Richards, but they might they might change in the future. I do not know for sure. Biochemistry oh, is interesting. Another, oh yeah, 
if you look at the curriculum, it's really interesting because of the way it fills your class requirements. You can use it as a biology credit or a chemistry credit. Right? That's what, it, at least I remember it saying on the document. So let's say you've already done general chemistry one, two. You don't need an additional chemistry chem credit to graduate. But if you're really interested in biochemistry, you can use it as a biology credit for your graduation requirements, which we will talk in a bit. That's more, I think some people did that to, uh, for the graduation requirements. And I think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. If you need the bio credit and you don't have it, it's not a bad option to consider. And speaking of bio, oh, physical chemistry. Yes, physical chemistry is also an option for a class you can take if you really want to continue that chemistry route. I know it's extremely mathematics based, so it's like super, like a lot of multivariate calculus, all that jazz. Because uh, Luke, he took it for a few weeks. He dropped it, but he took it and he said it was very math based. Although very few people take physical chemistry or OSSM. Let's say like 20 take biochemistry, let's say like three take physical chemistry. Like that's yeah, I think uh, for us, it was down to two people, at, mm -hmm. right? Two or three? Yes, it was, to my knowledge, it was two. At least two who finished the class. Yeah, every, I mean, a lot of people like signed up for the class and just instant dropped it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I remember Luke's physical chemistry stories. Those are fun. Uh, and then biology. So the thing about Austin's biology program, it is, it's good. But there are so many classes and so many options that you can take in terms of like options, right? So you have to take two to graduate, two biology classes to graduate, to my knowledge. And uh, most people typically take the biology classes uh, either in the spring of the junior year and then the fall of the senior year, or fall senior year and spring of their senior year, right? They usually do it in like two consecutive semesters. But it really varies in what you want to do. For example, you can take it two in one semester, or you can like break it up over the course of your two whole years at OSSM, your four semesters at OSSM. It's really weird, but if you're really interested, you can take more than two. And it's the same for all of every subject. If you really like the subject, you can take more uh, classes of it than the minimum. Something important to consider when going to biology, uh, the biology classes, um, if you really want to focus on biology and take a lot of the biology classes, the class you want to have in mind first is A and P because that is a prerequisite for a lot of the other higher end biology classes. Uh, a and P though is a, it's like the biology class at OSS, right? Like if you take biology, uh, OSS, you're more likely than not you're going to take A and P. And it's a fun class. I really like the class. Cause my August and I both took anatomy and physiology, but man, it was tough. It was a tough class. Yeah, I mean, it's a bio class. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not the best at biology, but I understand people who are better suited for biology will probably find it more, uh, will find it easier and they'll have a better time with it. But so I, mean, I, I, I thought it was a really interesting class that I learned a lot from. So other, if we look at the uh, first biology class you take at OSM, there's typically like, what, four? So it's like genetics and at NP, zoology and plant and soil science those are like the four first ones you typically take and you can take any one of them you can take any combination of them right so zoology and plant and soil science are typically known as like the biology you take your first if you do take a biology your first semester of junior year you take plant and soil or zoology that's what always just typically places you in however i did hear that this year they're giving the uh, upcoming juniors more options to what biology class they want to get placed in. So if you have that option, you have more options, we heavily recommend anatomy and physiology because it is a major prerequisite for the future classes. Yeah, so like take that as soon as you can. Yes. And genetics also. Genetics is a important, it's a very important class, although not as important as A&P in terms of prerequisites. But do keep in mind, if you want to take genetics, you need to have pre-calculus 3 accomplished, done before you do genetics. I think it's because of something to do with like hundred squares or something. Like so, it's like some small math stuff, but it, it's it's necessary. Something like that. I'm something not sure. like that. I don't know too much about it. And also, some offers a bunch of other math class, like other biology classes. Think of your embryo, your endo science, your endo, your neural neuroscience, your microbiology, your molecular cellular biology, all that jazz. And it's all based on having A and P first. 
uh, Otis and I both took neuro, an uh, introduction to neuroscience, and uh, it did use a lot of concepts from A and P. Right. There's definitely so, overlap, yeah. A lot of, yeah. I remember going back using my A and P notes to help me study for neuro. And I think it was uh, really useful. So it's smart that it's a good, it's a smart that it's a prerequisite. And now we look at another, one of the last science subjects, or it's just um, computer science. So I'm going to be 100% honest. OSSM's computer science is scarce. We have one full-time professor and one part-time professor. Right. So, I mean, I'm going to be, there's a lot of classes, computer science classes offered at OSSM, don't get me wrong, but there's not a lot of faculty. So if you want like office hours, you're gonna have to find one of those two. Right. And one of them is part-time anyway, so. You have to make sure you schedule it properly. But the class is offered for computer science, and I can talk a lot about this because I've taken most of them. Is first one is the introduction to computer science, and the second one is Java. And the reason I mentioned these two together is that you take one of these two your junior year first semester. Right. Introduction to computer science is a first semester only class. There's typically a 99% junior's first semester using it for the computer science requirement. It's really educational. I've looked at notes for the class. It's really educational. You actually learn quite a bit. It's pretty nice. It's very broad. It's like broad about everything from like the general coding concepts to data structures to all that, to like network stuff, all that jazz. It's really There's also some like more history stuff behind computer science. It's a big lecture hall too. I think it's like one of the two lecture hall classes of OSSM. Yeah, it's in the auditorium. The auditorium. And the second one is Java. So if you choose not to go to intro to computer science, but rather you pick Java as your first semester, which is more coding based, because intro to computer science are very conceptual. Java is more coding based, right? You do a lot of coding, you know, it's like very coding based, you do projects, all that jazz. And it's really educational and it's also the prerequisite, right? Prerequisite for all the future computer science classes. So most take it in the fall, but other, some other students take it in the spring semester. I know, August, you took a spring semester with Professor Jones, yes? Yes. So how do you feel about it? I know that's actually this is important. Uh, professor Jones is a really good professor. So you actually learn quite a bit. It's like, a sh it's sort of a shame that he's only part-time, but you, yeah, he, ta he teaches really well. And I learned quite a bit from the class, even though I did fall asleep a lot of the time. <laughs> uh, I did data structures. There's two data structure classes, data structures one and two. So the professor who teaches data structures one and two shifts every semester. So you get like the part-time and then the full-time or like the full-time and the part-time usually shifts. But data structures two is typically offered only in the spring, which is something you should keep in mind. I know some people try to sign up for in the fall, but not enough people signed up for it in my fall semester, so it was not offered. Very sad, broke my heart. But data structures one is offered both in the fall and the spring, but that professor changes. And it gives you, it's very conceptual, a few coding projects, but very conceptual, but it's really nice. Data structures in university is typically a one semester class, a one semester class and it isn't broken into two parts like how OSSM does it. But what you learn in those two semesters at OSSM is very similar to one, what you learned in that one data structure class at university. I know, because I've taken both. Right? I've taken two data structures at OSSM as well as a university data structures class. So I can say the material matches are very nicely. I use my notes from OSSM to help me in my university one. And then there's some other ones. There's computer architecture. I don't know too much about that. I know there's some physics in it though. Like I remember looking at some notes for computer architecture and I remember seeing parts of modern physics in there and I felt like a boomer for a moment there. It's like, oh my gosh, I remember when I did this stuff. Uh, and I heard there's like OS operating systems and networking, but I don't know anything about those two classes other than they were offered at one point during OSC7. Right. And now that we've talked a lot about the science, let's get into the humanities. Oh, wait. Before you move on to humanities, we should probably just like sum it up. So essentially, if you don't care too much about computer science and like coding, I would personally recommend just taking intro to CS because it's a pretty easy class 
and that just be done with computer science for the rest of your OSSM career. Yeah, a lot of people do that. It's like 75% of the class just one and done. They just, they're out. They do it and they're out. Yeah, because there's no reason you, like, you don't have to take the other ones if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. I just, it's very practical. I, I mean, I'm biased. I'm very biased. I'm going to acknowledge it here. But I at least believe that you should, if you have like an extra elective you want to do, I recommend doing at least Java before you graduate, right? Because it's, you know, it's like, it's not that crazy of a class in comparison to like, you're super hard physics, you're super hard math, but it provides really good real world applications. It has good at real world applications. That's true. So if you know how to code, good. it's pretty useful. It's useful. I know they do a lot of coding in math and physics. It's and a good it's skill like, nowadays. Good general. skill, yes. You know, employers will like it. Also good for automating stuff. Great, it's great. Uh, humanities. So, OSSM Humanities has a reputation for being the hardest classes at OSSM. Even harder than the STEM classes, which is kind of funny because I don't see an OSSM, an Oklahoma School of Science and History. It's science and mathematics, right? It's like ironic <laughs> because, well, history takes, like the humanities takes the most of your time, but it's a science and math school. Right. And I, I, I don't know. I think it's funny. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're all like science and math people. So we don't really like, we're not great at humanities. But I still feel like even people who are pretty decent at humanities, like they, it, these are not easy even for those people. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. like, oh I stayed up. I, I stayed up to 5 a.m. again writing this paper. Oh, no. It's like, oh, the paper's due tomorrow. I haven't started. All right. I guess I know what I'm doing tonight. Oopsies. Sorry, Dr. Gavins, your linear algebra, ho linear algebra homework can wait another day. <laughs> uh, that happened. Oops. I mean, uh, but yeah, so let's start with English. English is known to be the lesser of the two evils in terms of uh, the humanities. I don't know, uh, this is just like a student-based opinion, right? That's what I've heard from other students. This is what I heard from myself, from my friend group. So let's start with junior year. So junior year, you have options for English. Yep, you can only take two options. Hey, options or options? You know, oh, I like I having options. Hold on, I got to go do something. Oh, shite. Right. So you can take American literature first semester and composition second semester. In American literature, you read a bunch of pieces from like poems, to small snippets from books, to all that you know stuff. And you like you do homework assignments about them. I think it's really interesting. I really like the pieces that we read during. I think my favorite was like Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman. Now that's a man right there. And then the whole American literature thing is summed up by a paper, right? Now I didn't do good on my American literature paper. I'm not gonna lie, and I think it was pretty tough. But obviously, I wrote about the same guy, Edgar Allan Poe. And I was like, wow, what a coincidence. Very cool. He got like 20 points better than me, but you know, what a coincidence. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what happened to you there, Anthony. Whoopsies. I wrote about a very generic topic. I found out later that it's like, oh yeah, I get a bunch of papers like this every year. Sorry, dude. And I was like, oh, But you know, it is what it is. It happened. It happened. It's in the past now. I got the B, call it a day. Whoops. Uh, and then you can take composition. So composition is a lot about writing. Amlet's reading, composition is writing, get the two parts. And you do a lot of writing and composition. It was like weekly. We had a weekly writing assignment every you know, week, right? Practically, yeah. Almost every week. It felt like every week. <laughs> so I'm not the best at writing, I'm not going to lie. But I learned a lot about writing in that composition class. I learned so much about writing. And I really liked it. I just I mean, practice makes perfect, right? You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can say I'm a pretty good writer now. Because you know, my writing grades before composition, bad. After composition, acceptable. You know, so you have to do something, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, most people, most students believe that composition is easier than American literature. All right. And if you have the option, this is a tough one because I see both pros and cons of taking American literature first semester than doing a second semester. So Amlet comp or comp Amlet? Because students have options. You can take either one uh, first. So what is your experience taking American literature than composition, August? Uh, 
personally, I thought composition was easier. Uh, maybe that's just me though, because um, the thing with American literature, right, is that although you have readings, like I'll, some of the time, some of the, some weeks, you don't have like a big assignment and you can, you know, it's basically just reading. And so that gives you some free time. Whereas with composition, you're writing, even though you're writing like every week, here's the thing. Maybe I think it's just a personal thing, but with American literature, some of the big projects you have are require you to like do research, right? And I find papers that require research a lot more work than papers in composition where you can just write them out and be done. Like without having to do any research. Composition, most, mostly just, just go for it, write something. And uh, the most the important thing to keep in mind is that people say your second semester is harder than your first semester. So getting the harder one out of the way first is a good idea. But, by do, but if you do composition first semester, you build up those writing skills, which are very useful for American literature. So this is like really tough, you know, this is like a really tough choice. I personally don't think it's that big of a difference. Like personally, it's not that big I think either, either one. Will- one, it doesn't matter. You're going to get like a similar amount of work regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, reg- I mean, you have to do both regardless. So mm-hmm. it's not like that big of a deal, whichever class you end up going first. Yeah. And then, uh, sec- and then your senior year, right? You have, this, you don't get a choice in this. Right? I'm, I'm sorry, but you don't get a choice. It's, well, at least for when myself and August did it, they might have changed it. But you have ethics and STEM first semester and world literature second semester. So when I heard about the ethics and STEM class, because they added it when I was a junior. So I was the very, August and I were the very first class to got to try out ethics and STEM. So it was very new, very, uh, it wasn't tried out on any other also some students before us. At least that's a one way of putting it. So there was a lot of readings. A lot about ethics. The basics about we get, it was like a beginning, like 80% ethics, 0% STEM. Like 80, a lot of no, ethics, no, no. no STEM. Right? It's, there's a lot of, even though it's called ethics in STEM, there's actually just a lot of philosophy. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I agree. Because the professor is a philosophy guy. And so he, there's a lot of stuff in there before you like really get into the actual like STEM part of the class. It's like the first 12 weeks, let's say 18 weeks in the semester. First 12, philosophy, basic ethics, like the, uh, the train problem. You kill one guy, you kill five guys, you know, like pick which, pick which one you want to do. Or like the, uh, push the guy off the bridge to like to hit the train or, you know, remember that one? Yeah, or like kill a guy for all his organs and save five people. Oh yeah. It's like, Those oh are- man. It was a really, I liked those type of, I didn't like the, I personally didn't like the philosophy too much. I thought it was interesting, but it wasn't my favorite. I liked the ethics ones where we talked about like, for example, the scenarios we just went over. And I liked a lot about how those ethics were applied to STEM cases, like in the medical field, or like in artificial intelligence or like facial recognition. We talked about that a little bit in the last six weeks. That I thought was so interesting. So maybe yeah, there's some, definitely there's definitely some interesting topics in there. Yes. Uh, it's a very discussion based class. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about the class is that there's not a lot of actual work to do. Just reading. Just reading. It's pretty yeah, pretty much. Unless they change it super drastically from when we took it. You have a few papers here and there though. You do, you should keep that in mind. But it's very few and far in between. And the final is not bad. I like that. The final was nice because it was wasn't that bad. It, was, it wasn't the hardest final. Yeah, as long as you pretty much paid attention in class or maybe took a few notes here and there, you'll be fine. Because it's essentially just what you talked about in class. Yep. Uh, the second semester, you have world literature. Ah, uh, yes. Now, that is a class that is nothing like ethics and stuff. We can call it that. It's like the opposite. Because you're reading a lot of old texts from a long time ago. Think of like, the Odyssey, you know, I think it's like that. Is it, the, did we read the Odyssey? Or did that was we read the Iliad. The Iliad, you know, it was, the, it was the Iliad, yeah. similar trilogy or similar book series, kind of. 
Iliad, Journey to the West, and uh, then Mahabharata. Mahabharata. Oh. And then, yeah. We had a bunch yeah. of like history, like readings, random articles as well. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to broaden your knowledge, world literature broadens your knowledge, right? You read a lot of interesting texts from literally everywhere. So, you know, if you want to be a book nerd, and you're like, wow, you know, I read the Mahabharata, you know, like, oh, no, no, it's good for that, right? It's, I learned a lot about different types of, like, books. I liked reading. I like reading the books. You know, I can say that. Uh, I mean, these are, like, super well-known stories. So, like, they're, actually, they're, they're going to be, like, entertaining to read. But, like, it's just, you know, whether or not you have the time to read. Now, that's, now that's a different problem. Oh, yeah. The humanities in general time consumer such a big time consumer from whether you're writing papers to reading these articles or books we had to read the whole Mahabharata the whole Iliad I believe granted they were like broken parts at a time then we read like oh we read like three chapters this week or like five chapters this week but we still had to read them all and we had like quizzes oh yeah over the readings so like to make sure you actually read them yeah and then, uh, well, yeah, I, I like the English program. Also. Personal opinion, I like the junior uh, English classes a lot better than the senior because, I don't know, I really like composition a lot. So take that as you will. But, yeah, I, I personally found that during uh, junior year, the American Lit and Composition classes, I feel like there was a lot more actual like writing assignments. But when it came to um, second, uh, the second year, with ethics and STEM and world literature, I, f- I feel like there's just more reading. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I, I mean, I, maybe it's just ethics and STEM really like skewing things because ethics and STEM was pretty much almost all reading uh, assignments. But yeah. Uh, also, I guess a personal thing with ethics and STEM and world literature, I fell asleep almost every single class. <laughs> the professor had a profound effect on people where you just fall asleep. I think it had to do something with the fact where the time, the class was scheduled. That definitely has something to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one of our, I think it was world literature. We had at 8 a.m. And then the first, the ethics and STEM we had first semester was 9.30 immediately after modern physics. And modern physics does something to a man that you will never see in anything else. And that it is, it's like NyQuil. <laughs> and as someone who hasn't taken NyQuil before, I know what it is. I know what it feels like now. You know, just go into deep slumber. History. Now, now on the other, now on the other side of the coin, we have history. Right? That's the other major humanities. Uh, so at least your junior year, you have options, right? Well, based on well, your prior credit. So the general one that most people take, like your 80% of your class takes, is American history. So you have American history one and two, you know, just a, it's a one-year course broken into two parts. And you just learn about American history, right? And I think it's interesting. I thought, at least from, I heard it's good, very good things about it. There's some papers you have to write, some uh, primary source documents, and some just term papers you have to write. And you know, it's like, it's, a lot of reading and a lot of writing as per your typical history class, yeah? It's basically just a normal, like, uh, AP U.S. history class. Speaking of AP U.S. history, you can also take the APS, AP U.S. history exam after taking American history. It prepares you for that. Now, I should have taken it, the AP U.S. history exam. <laughs> now, that is... Uh, the thing is, I took it at my old high school, so I didn't have to take it at OSSM. But I didn't take the AP exam because nobody in my class did. I think it was like a, it was like a nonverbal boycott because you know we were like we were not prepared. We're just not going to take it. So I yeah, don't so have es- it. So essentially, if you come into OSSM with American history credit, the U.S. history credit, you can not take that class at OSSM and go on the other history t- track for junior year. Yeah. East Asian history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so East Asian history, I think my favorite history class, like at all of Osusam. 
And that's not a really big thing to overcome because there's only three history classes that are All right, let's I took three history classes. So this is taught by a different professor than the American history professor. It's taught by one of the librarians. Uh, I think she's a librarian. She might be a librarian on the side and a professor first, but I don't know which one's. Uh, she works as a librarian as well for us or something. So she knows, she has like a lot of resources she can help you and be like, oh yeah, you want to write a paper about this? You have some library resources, which is very good for the paper. Uh, but mainly, uh, East Asian history covers the history of East Asian countries, it's in the name. It's basically it's, just China, Japan, Korea. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool, I really liked it. So uh, it's a fun class. Because it's smaller than your typical American history class, because very few people have the American history credit, think about 15, and literally like almost all of them are from Classen. Yeah. <laughs> because Classen offers AP US history 10th grade. So they get into East Asian. Hey, that was me. So Easy it's, call. It's like, okay, so East Asian was like all the Classen kids, myself, and a girl from Union, Union High School. <laughs> And it was so fun. I really like the the environment of the class, you know. Yeah, the class is actually there's, the class is very chill. It's like I'm pretty sure East Asian is easier than American history. Yes, that I is, don't think it's really a contest. I heard it's not a contest, but you still have to work, right? You have you have a few papers to write, and my favorite, the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was. So this is a small anecdote. So when I was in East Asian history, for my presentation, I wrote about Power Rangers, or, or the genre. Okay, it's a mainly a Japanese uh, like source material, but that whole genre of like TV series, the Tokusatsu. Think of your Power, your Power Rangers, your your guys in spandex <laughs> fighting alien crime. Think of it like that. I really liked that as a kid, so I picked it. And looking back about it, looking back at it, it was kind of cringe. I should have done karate, but man, I had a lot of fun doing it. So it is what it is. August, how'd you feel about it? You like, oh no, you were gone that day, weren't you? I, yeah, it, I think it was pretty much only like the presentations that day that I missed. So your presentation and whoever else's was that day. <sighs> <laughs> man, it, was, it was a fun presentation. Oh, yeah. really but getting back on topic, um, yeah, the class is pretty like for the tests, right? She basically does a review of what will be on the test before the test. So like you, you just study what she tells you to and you, you're fine. You're totally fine. I hope she changed it for the class under us though. Well, oopsies. That but sucks. it might be changed. She might have changed it. I don't know. And then the second one is Middle East. History of the Middle, Modern Middle East. Top yeah, so, same professor. Yeah, so East Asian is first semester and Middle East history is second semester. And that's pretty, that was interesting. I like East Asian a little more because, well, I'm from the general East Asian region. You know, whoopsies. I'm automatic. Yeah, but I liked it a lot. But Middle East is still really interesting. I actually really like that class as well. They have the same chill environment, but you still, you still get to hang out with your buddies. You get to hang out with your buddies and you learn about <laughs> Middle Eastern history. It's like, whoa, that's kind of fun. I remember they were like, actually quite a few classes where we just ended up watching a movie or something or like a documentary yeah it was like oh man we're gonna and she brought like snacks for us like like you know like uh, middle eastern based like, snacks like a turkish delight that slapped that was yeah. really good so like that'll never happen in any other class at ossm uh, i got snacks from dr chakra birdie and data structures wow okay <laughs> i remember that i meant to watch it like spending classes while watching movies Okay, that's, that's, that's something. And pretty much doing different. nothing the entire class. Hey, we learned about the Middle East through video form. That, I learned uh, something. True, you got a point. I learned some I learned culture. that I love Turkish delights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it's typically the Middle East and the East Asian history track is known to be a little easier than American history. Much easier. Much, much easier. But so if, you know, yeah, if possible, you want to come in with a U.S. history credit. Or if you're crazy, take U.S. history over summer at a community college. Oh. So you get to have fun. <laughs> I actually, I 100%, okay, this may be a little off topic, but if you're really motivated, try to come into OSSM with a little bit of community college credit on your belt, maybe the summer before. 
So you can get like, you know, you can get the really hard ones out the way, like American history or like some of the math. Some stuff just they won't let you do that, like uh, English or like. Yeah, there's no getting out of those. But, you know, if you want to get a little ahead in your placement, taking a college, community college class before might be an option. Yeah, for Let's like, say you get like Calc 1 out the way. You start in Calc 2. You get, you get to get uh, the more math based approach, uh, more maths after Calc 2 faster, you know? Yeah, or like chemistry Most credit, like, coming in with chemistry credit. Yeah, getting to take organic chemistry as fast as you can, good. It's good if you really like that field. And it's pretty cool. You know, like, I was saying it's a lot of respect based, and you get a lot of respect for that. Very respect based culture. But that's a, that's a topic for another day. Uh, then the banger. Oh my god. Western civilization. <sighs> you don't have a choice. Your senior year, you will have to take Western civilization one and two, first semester and second semester. Remember when we were in intro of computer science and we were talking about how it's one of the two auditorium classes? Yeah, Western civilization is a second auditorium class. So you sit there for two hours and you learn about Western civilization. It was like three, I'm pretty sure. It felt like three. I think it was two. The Maybe thing two about Western three. civilization is that it happens once a week. And so it basically condenses like all the hours into one big class. Yeah, it's like, no, don't get me wrong. West Civ, the content of West Civ is so good. Like, I really like how Dr. Chavez teaches the class. Like, I learned a lot in West Civ. And, like, I am not saying this in, like, a lying manner. I learned so much in West Civ. The issue with West Civ is that it's hard. The test, and the, 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 every, the academic part of West Civ is so hard. That is yeah. the final boss of OSS. Like, if you... A lot of people say that you don't become a senior until you take your first Western Civilization Saturday exam. Like at that point, you're just a, a late junior, you know. <laughs> I find like it was like five people. I, I heard it in a conversation once, but I heavily agree because how hard it is. So you have there's a recitation as well. So you have big lecture, and then you have a recitation, which is a smaller class. So let's say you have 80 people in one lecture hall for the big one, and you have a smaller class of about 20 or so for your recitation. And that one, it's like a more closer experience. You can ask questions, you can like get quizzed. The idea with that is that it's um, discussion-based. So like you get a reading for the week, you read that, and then you discuss. And it um, intertwines with whatever the lecture is covering for that week as well. Yeah. And the readings are known to be um, a little long. A little too long. Oh, yeah. Uh, the biggest readings we've had was 60 pages, which happened a few times, like three or four times a semester. Like two to three a semester, it's usually 60 pages. Typical 30 to 40, the easier weeks were 20. All right. So think of it as like a general idea of how long the readings will be. And then you will have one reading quiz every six weeks for 18 weeks. So you have three quizzes. And they are massive. They're like 10% of your grade, but they're that's pretty big. 3% a quiz. You don't do a reading one week, you, or you don't do well, your grade just, you know, just a big hit. Yeah. It's scary. And the exams are so hard. Like the Saturday exam and the final exam, so difficult. At least personally. Because the, it's broken into two parts. You have definitions and then the writing part. So the definition, you get a list of terms and you have to define them and how they relate to history and how they're important to Western. Yeah, it's straightforward. It's really straightforward, but she gives you the terms beforehand. So you get like 10, ter you get like 25 terms. You get 10 terms on your exam and you write definitions for five of them. It's not that hard. At least you can, you can lose a few points here and there, but that's not the main point killer. The main one is the essays. So you have a general essay connecting a bunch of topics together, you know, from like the lectures. And then you have a reading based essay from the readings. Right. Yeah, from, from the recitation section. From the recitation section readings. Those are hard and long and painful. And I've never been good at doing those exams. I typically average like a 70 on those exams. I'm not going to lie to you. Because they're, they're really hard. Yeah, I just like, <laughs> when I did those, I just try to memorize as many sources as I can. It's like, all right, this author, this author, this author. So, but this is one thing I've done. Right. I did it for one exam and I got it right. If you read the readings, read all of them, 
you can find a common theme in all of them. And you can try to guess the reading question by connecting the dots. But it's just hard. One student was super hard, but the professor is really nice. She's really nice. Yeah. And then the papers are, there's one major paper each semester. The first one isn't bad, it's only five pages. The second one is long, it's like 12 pages. Like, think of it as like a thesis paper. Like you take a, you get, you pick a top in the beginning of your senior year or so, and then you have to write one paper about it, five pages about your sources for your first semester of senior year. And then like a big, like 12 page or so paper it, uh, analyzing your topic, making like a thesis about it and like, you know, proving it and all. Senior year, second semester, super long, but it's due in March. So after March, you're just free. There's no major Western civilization assignments from there. You're free. It's nice. Well, don't forget the final, but you know. And then the final, you know, the final, right? You know, yeah, no but major yeah, paper. Yeah. Well, the paper's gone, it's like, oh, uh, yeah. I'm alive. You're free. Sure. And then, uh, oh, languages. So OSSM, you have to take four languages if you haven't taken your own high school. This is a bit weird thinking about it like this. You have to take two years two years of foreign language at your old high school, or if you haven't taken your old high school, you have to take them at OSSEM. So just sometime two years of your whole high school, four years of high school. And there are several options you get. You get like Chinese, French, German, Japanese, Latin, Spanish. And they're offered from one to four, levels one to four. Right. And you know, the based on like how far you did your old high school and you know, all that jazz. So I was placed into Spanish three, and I did Spanish. August, uh, you did French, right? Yeah, I did French all four semesters. Uh, so you can take your language. But there's something that most people don't know about the languages at OSSEM. And that you don't have to do them if you've already done two years of your old high school. This is something that at least most people don't know, most juniors going in don't know. If you've already taken them, and you talk to the course advisor, the person in charge of the courses, you can say, oh, I've already taken two years of language in my old high school. Can I just not do the languages? And they'll force you to replace each language class with an elective. So if you want to get ahead in your courses and you don't want to do language, you can do that. You can take extra science course, extra math courses. But do keep in mind, languages are typically an easier class because they're not too intense. So most people continue doing their language to pass the course requirement as well as having a class that's not as stressful as their yeah. other classes. It's pretty, yeah. I mean, OSSM definitely not focusing on languages, so <laughs> they're pr all pretty easy. Uh, they vary in difficulty, from what I've heard, actually. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, definitely. They're um, easier, but some of them, yeah, they're, they're not like blow They're language classes, but... They're, they're not blow off, but some are easier than others. So I think that's a good way of summing, you know? As compared to, like, the normal classes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like fine arts, right? So fine oh, arts yeah. are a really weird thing. Uh, you have to take two before you graduate. Right. And it's a bunch of options. And they change, they change like literally every semester. Yeah, so. You have to be on your feet, making sure if you see one you really like, you should take it then, right? Because they might not be there next semester or next year or whatever. I feel like but, whatever you choose for fine arts doesn't matter too much. Doesn't matter. Uh, just choose whatever like sounds interesting to you and because it, it doesn't it's like not for a grade or anything it's just it, you just have to do something just it's pass, so it's like pass fail is a project that you need to do yeah and pass fail essentially were you there and like did something yeah you need to be you can only miss out two a semester i believe two or three final sections even if it's like an emergency the emergency counts as like your missed session like a family emergency or like you're sick or something and then um there's a big, like a gala at the end of the, each semester that show gala. up all the fine gala. arts. Stuff. Oh, it's like gala. 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 Hey, at my old high school, we had a, a gala. Actually? I call, I call it the gala. I, we call it the gala. <laughs> you want to call it gala? Sure, do whatever. I don't care. You know, it's, not, it's the same thing. G-A-L-A. -A. <laughs> fine arts performance event. Oops. Yeah, for the performance, uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's a, you showcase your art, there's a performance for the dancing-based ones. The typical fine arts offered are like, there's dance. So like, in my year, there was ballroom dance, but I don't know, if that's, I don't think that's offered anymore because the professor retired. 
this studio dance, or like your hip hop dance, your hip hop dance, all that jazz. Uh, speaking of jazz, we have a jazz band, like a rock band. That's like varied, it depends, it varies which one is given each semester. There's guitar, you know, beginning and intermediate. There's orchestra, uh, drawing and like the sculpture, like fiber arts, all that thing. I don't know exactly what's off, what was offered the last semester, but they have a assembly about it all right, towards the beginning, about three weeks in, and you can learn about, learn about it more there. But what, after the assembly, people immediately rush to sign up because it, the sheets to sign up are set up during the assembly. So like, you have to like run effectively, or like walk, but run to the other side of the building and sign up for your fine arts. And it's terrifying. And Some they fill get, really fast. Yeah. The popular ones fill up fast. What were you saying all this? Oh yeah, but if you're uh, also something to keep in mind, they're not like that good. So don't come in expecting anything like really good uh, from the fine arts classes. They're like serviceable, but you're not gonna really like learn too much. Think of it as like a way to un like the, the unwind. That's the idea. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have some like really amazing people. Oh, for sure. Like for example, we had a uh, we had Sylvan Zhang. Uh, he graduated from Ulster some the year after us. He's like a really like famous con like violin guy. Uh, it's like one of our students. Yeah, he's, he, he was, was like smurfing in the orchestra. Okay. He, was he was almost for sure best violin, best high school violinist in the state. Yeah. I mean, and this, yeah, and he yeah, and he was just this guy was like he was doing a lot in the orchestra. You know, like his focus was mainly on the school, school stuff, and not violin he had it's a uh, science math school and he had to sacrifice some of his violin stuff for it right you know, he still did do some taking, like personal practice though in his uh, he did personal practice and he had like a, a way to like continue to practice in a orchestra but he couldn't do as much as he could in his own high school but at least there was a chance an opportunity for him to do an orchestra like thing but it's definitely it's definitely not like his level he was he was way too he was way too good yeah, you know. i was there <laughs> I, I can speak from experience he was way too good for the rest of us. Yeah, like I hear him practicing on my floor and that guy was like, oh man, that guy's built different in many ways. Uh, and then it's like some miscellaneous classes. Right? These are like miscellaneous. Uh, think of like this like an engineering seminar, geoscience, robotics class, history of medicine, American music, film and society. And a lot of these vary on what, like, what semester it is. They always change up. But you know, if you, if, if you, want, if you like them, take them. Because uh, something to keep in mind is OSU 7 requires you to take two STEM electives. So those classes, think of the, the, the GSIS robotics and engineering seminar, for example, they count as two electives. But you can also fill those two electives with like, you know, classes you're interested in that like pass the requirements. Like if you want to take a fourth physics class, you can. Take an extra math class, you can. Right. So, you know, do whatever you want with the electives. Yeah, so the reason Anthony places under miscellaneous is they're basically, uh, basically classes, these classes are there just to like fill requirements. Like the only reason you'd really take them is if you just need a requirement checked off on the list. They're, I'm not sure how like really much you would learn from them. And they're really like weird niche specific things. So you wouldn't really need these, I guess, maybe depending on what you're interested in, I guess, maybe take them, but you wouldn't. Yeah, you pretty much just take these for the requirements, to, to fill the requirements, if you don't want to take a harder class. Yeah. I mean, if you really like the subject, too, then go for them, do whatever you want. But like August said, you know, they're not going to be, they're not as crazy hard as your other classes, like the mandatory ones. So yeah, these are easy, easy credit requirements. There you go. Yes. Like fillery, you know. You know, I don't, I don't want to, like, say fillery, but it's fillery. And then there's community service. It's not academic, but you still have to do it as a, pre as a requirement to graduate. So OSU 7 requires you to do 60 in-school volunteer hours and 60 community service hours to graduate. And you can do them various ways. Uh, what I did for my community was I worked at the uh, blood bank, my city's, my town's blood bank. You know, I did like some paperwork, I packed boxes, I snacked. I'm the guy who packs the pretzels for your blood drive, you know, all that jazz. And then for school service hours, I did uh, in-school tutoring. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if the stress was worth the volunteer hours. I'm not gonna lie. I tutored, very stressful, but they're pretty easy tutoring hours because I just tutor. Right? I don't have to break my back like picking up a box. I'm not the strongest guy, no. So, you know. Okay, so the reason Anthony says this is tutoring was sort of stressful is because Anthony was super popular with all the like all the juniors. And so all of them went to him for tutoring. <laughs> there were like all these other tutors sitting there, right, ready to tutor people, but they would just go to Anthony. Anthony was like the most popular tutor. What a oh, guy. Can you make me and he did too many, he did way too many hours as well. So that's why he, <laughs> normally it's not that hard. Normally you wouldn't, normally maybe like one person or like two people go to you, but like often you don't really get much people going to you for tutoring. Yeah. Anthony was an exception. But typically with the tutoring thing, they told us that if there's no one covering for us, the tutor, you can do your uh, schoolwork. But, so I was like, okay, I'm going to tutor a tutoring session for two hours. And I'm expecting like maybe three kids to come to me so I can do my math homework. But like I had like a lot of people come. So I could not do my math homework. So I had to stay up an extra few hours to do my math homework. And it was really stressful my senior year. I dialed, I dialed it back my second semester. There was still like a decent amount. But man. Uh, take it as you want. Yeah, I you think tutoring is a good way. You can get tutoring hours and not actually tutor anyone. You yeah. just have to be there ready to tutor someone. And anyone can tutor. They made the changes so anybody can tutor. Which okay, You just I have to have like, taken the class before. Yeah. Take the class. I mean, I, I, I thought that you had to get a good grade in the class, but no, they just let you tutor, right? And they're confident. So, you know, take it as you want. <laughs> Wait, what yeah, do so, you do for your volunteer hours? Yeah, so... Um, the school hours were pretty easy to get because you have so many opportunities to get them. Like you'll get emails from like, hey, come help me out with this and you'll get school hours. So it's like, oh, okay, I'll do that. But um, I guess out of school, that's, I guess that's, that could be harder because um, you know, you're at OSSM most of the time. So for me, I did mine on the weekends. I went to, vo I, I was volunteering at uh, Integris, the hospital. And that's essentially where I just racked up all of mine. I personally recommend doing your volunteer hours the summer before OSSM starts. The summer, okay, this is an ultra instinct strategy. <laughs> and no matter how cringe that sounds, I'm telling you, it's really smart. Do it the summer between sophomore and junior year. Just, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna do much, right? Because you know, it's summertime. So you just like pump it out, maybe like two hours a day for a few weeks. Get your 60 hours out of the way. And you chill it. That's what yeah. I did. My mom suggested it to me. I was like, "Mom, you're a genius." Yeah, that's so I, that's like, I did it. it. I did it, and it was really nice because I didn't, I have, didn't have stress. Yeah, I didn't have the foresight to do that, so I ended up doing mine during the school year on the weekends, which sort of sucks because you lose so much time. Like yeah. you really need that time as well. So yeah, yeah. do anything you recommend. Do it on like summer break, and then I guess maybe like the smaller like like Thanksgiving, like uh, winter vacation, like that. Winter break, if need be as well. Yeah, and then uh, also uh, because also classes are known to be so difficult, and the also some touts them as being college level classes, you know all of that jazz. You can get college credit for your classes without taking the, taking the AP exam or the IB exam, or all that. Because also some has talked to several universities within Oklahoma and secured credit opportunities. So I'm going to pull up a document that talks about this. So here, if you look at this document, you can see that if you get a good enough grade in certain classes at OSSM, you could get credit for certain classes at some uh, Oklahoma colleges, uh, OU, OSU, and TU in particular. So that's the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State University, and University of Tulsa. I believe. Yes, and uh, it doesn't count for all the classes. It's only particular classes and particular subjects. Like the most popular ones are math, physics, chemistry, biology, and computer science. And we will have a specific list that goes into the grades you need and what classes you'll receive it for for each one of these three universities in the description. So if you're interested in that, you should check that out. Yeah. You should keep these classes in mind, especially if you know there's a good chance you might be going to one of these colleges in the future, because getting that free credit is like really nice. You'll thank yourself later on. 
Yeah, and it also sets you up to graduate uh, faster because I've heard from several people when I went, when I started going to OSEP, or at least when I was applying to, that they were able to graduate maybe like a year faster or like half a year faster because of the prior credit they received from their classes transferring from OSSM to their university. So it's real, like August said, it's really nice and you should at least try to keep these in mind when you're looking at your course selection form. Additionally, uh, we also have a schedule, August's schedule from his classes at uh, OSSM, like the type of class he took from his junior year to his senior year. So if Bring you want to start down. talking more about that, all right, all right. So I guess we could start my first class, uh, junior year, first semester. That's general physics. That's the physics I started in since I didn't go into OSSM with any like physics credit. So you know that's where I started, and so did most people. And yeah, general physics first semester, and so that means next semester, I had mechanics, and I also had electricity and magnetism because I decided to double up. <laughs> so that was like. That was, yeah, that was, it was tough. It was, it was a little bit tough to say the least. But the reason I went for those two and then doubling up is because that allowed me to take modern physics next semester. Boom, introduction to modern physics. That caused me so much pain, but it sounds so cool. And, and you then, also, yeah. And you also took tour next semester, right? Yes, I did. Wow, how did you know, Anthony? It's like we were in the same class or something. Oh, like we fell asleep right Whoa. next to each other. Holy cow! <laughs> yep. So well, uh, that's a solid class for engineering. Yeah. I mean, you went, you did a lot of these physics classes because you were going into engineering, and I know you took modern physics before, but the other ones are like important to your discipline, yeah. 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 So like gen phys, mechanics, ENM, two O, those are pretty big like engineering classes. Modern physics is really only if you're going to like pure physics. But it sounds cool, so I took it anyway. Oh, zoom in a little too much there. <laughs> okay. And then uh, we can look at math. Yep. So I started in PC three. Uh, after taking the placement test, I started here. So it's like not right at the bottom, but close to the bottom, I suppose. And so from PC3, after that, I just went along the like required math track. So PC3, first semester, Calculus 1, uh, second semester, junior year, and then Calculus 2, first semester, senior year. And then after that was when I actually got to like choose what math classes I want. And in the end, I ended up choosing differential equations. Yeah, in hindsight, I should have done uh, multi as well. But because that gets me OU credit, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's oh, whatever. It's too late now. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All whale. Took French. That was a pr so yeah. I took language. Uh, I took French all four semesters. That was just a personal decision. I just wanted to like keep going with it because I had taken it almost every single year nope. throughout like middle school and high school. So I figured, hey, you know what? Might as well continue. It'd be a shame to just drop it here. But do you, you plan to, to continue taking uh, French classes at OU? Uh, I don't think so. I'll probably just like self-study, keep going that way. You gotta respect the hustle. Thank you, thank uh, you. Yes, like, oh, yeah, chemistry? Yep. General chemistry with Dr. Hossein. Oh god, oh, I god, remember Dr. Hossein. Oh. I had a jolly old time. <laughs> oh, yeah, jolly. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely uh, learned some stuff in this class. Yeah, so Gen Chem 1. First semester, so that oh, that means Gen Chem two next semester, Quite and then Dr. after Hosein. that, yep. <laughs> Since I was doing, a, I was planning on pre med, I decided to also take organic chemistry, and so organic chemistry one, yeah, third semester, and then organic chemistry two in my final semester. Yep, and luckily organic chemistry doesn't have a lab for organic chemistry two, but there is unfortunately one for organic chemistry one, so that's that. Uh -huh. Few extra hours, but at least it's not like a lab with civil investors. And then I guess we could start uh, shifting into. I guess we can hit the last of the STEM classes. Oh yeah. Uh, talk about intro to computer science. So, yeah. So intro to computer science. I chose this one because like I wasn't really too too interested in. Uh, I guess like coding because I didn't think you know I wasn't gonna go into that area anyways. Like computer science. 
So it's like, you know, I'm just gonna go, you know, the easy intro to comp sci, just, you know, take it easy. But uh, next semester, I end up deciding to take Java anyways, because you know, I was like, wait a second, coding is sort of nice to know, you know, good skill to have, might as well, can't go wrong with that. Also, it's, you know, it's another elective, so hey, why not? And then, oh, yeah, that's about the end of my comp sci career at OSSM. I didn't take any more after that. Yeah. Let me talk about, oh, oh wait, oh, yeah, the, we could probably talk about the last, uh, I always forget about bio, because I understand that you took it senior oh, yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, I started my bio late, and I ended up taking A&P in my uh, first semester of senior year. And then after that, I took, what was it? Neuro, Neuro? Right? yeah. Neuro in uh, last my final semester. So in hindsight, since I'm going like pre-med biomedical engineering, right? I definitely should have taken a lot more bio classes, like taken A and P way earlier, if possible. And then, cause that would allow me to take a bunch of the like the other bio classes that I would have to eventually take for like pre-med anyways. So like in hindsight, I should have taken way more bio and earlier, but eh. And uh... I don't know if we, I completely forgot if we mentioned it earlier, but Neuro also doesn't get you that uh, credit for OU Biology if you see on the sheet. So do keep that in mind if you're, Neuro is a very interesting class, but do keep in mind if you're doing, for example, a, another bio and neuroscience, you have to do a third biology that fits the OU requirements if you want that credit. That's important to know. I understand, I know some people are like, ah, oh, I don't have my bio credit, but I took two. Oh man. And then I guess we can talk about the humanities now. Let's start off with Amlet. Yeah, so first semester, Am Amlet, you know, that was fun. Professor Wilkins is a great professor. I enjoyed that class. And then after that, yeah, composition, because I took Amlet first semester, I had composition this semester after that. So these classes don't really, not really much of a choice in them. So, you know. So, and then ethics is done, there it is. Early in the morning as well for perfect falling asleep time. <laughs> ah, good uh, oh yeah. Then the best the, even time earlier slot. in the morning. Oh my god. Oh gosh. I, hey, yeah. Yeah. I, I stayed asleep. I stayed awake in one class. One time. I stayed awake. <laughs> I, I was actually thoroughly impressed with myself that day. I, I like, remember oh. you talking to me about this. Oh my god, I think right? I have a new world record. Dude. I was I was very proud of that moment. That moment I stayed awake. And then we save the best class for last, history. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. East Asian. East it's actually a really nice time slot. Yeah, I know, right? And like, you, if you have no class in the morning, I, I had no class in the morning because I took Java. It was on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I would just like sleep or like just work on Tuesday morning and only just one easy class and I'm just chilling. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good time slot. Yeah. So I ended up going uh, East Asian and then Middle East history because I had uh, U.S. history credit going into OSSM. And so, yeah, being able to take these two classes, super nice because they're like rel pretty chill, relatively easy. But then senior year, not no yeah. choice here. Oh, baby, oh, Western, yeah. West, West Civ, mm, time to die. Oh, that's, there that's, it is. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. It's just a two semester track. You did Western both semesters, so that's, yep. a, that's a real jolly yeah, old time. No one has a choice here. You have to take the class. Uh, I know you talked about this for biology, but were there any other classes you wa you like wanted to take at OSA? Like biology and like multi. I know those two things you mentioned. Any other? Yeah, probably those. Mainly for like, I mean, first of all, you know, the credit for OU, but you know, bio because you know pre med. I have to like take those classes, and I sort of wish I took them or, uh, at OSSM because then I would have been had a, have a head start in those classes whenever I eventually take it at called, uh, OU. But yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. I took a few, so you know, that's not bad. It gets it out the way. I mean, you got like at least like, I don't know, at least five or six, seven classes out the way. Yeah. yeah that's like pretty nice and very good. Yeah. And I will stop sharing. And then, oh man. So, there's a lot of classes you can take at OSU Center. Like, I mean, I understand that some people choose to take the uh, bare minimum because they don't want to stress themselves and they, don't, they want to maintain like decent grades. And I, I know people do that, but 
what do you, well, at least what do you think about that, August? Um, personally, I suppose, I, per I think it's sort of a missed opportunity. If you don't like, if you take it like all the way easy, I think like you should at least try and push yourself a little bit because like OSSM, the idea behind it after all is to like prepare you for college, right? So if you don't, I feel like if you don't push yourself like at least a little, you won't really like learn as much as you can, right? And like be as prepared for college as you could be. Cause like the harder you work at OSSM, I feel like the easier it, the college will feel. Uh, you know I tell this to a lot of people going to OSSF whenever they ask me about the classes. I mean, like one person, but still all the people that I guess you, I talked about this in the interview as well. If you want to, if you rewatch the interview video, you'll see me talk about this, about using OSSF as like a tool. You know, it's a tool to get you those academic opportunities. You got, you know, like we mentioned earlier, those PhD professors, you got the experts in the field, you know, helping you out, willing to go to the dorm at like office hours at night to 8 p.m. to help you out, you know. And because it's like a tool, uh, I recommend taking all the classes you find interesting. Like how August and I both took modern physics, even though it's like a pure physics type of class. It's, it was fun, it was interesting. And you know, I learned a lot from it. Uh, like some other classes I took, I took because I found them interesting. I needed electives, but I found them interesting, you know. So, I mean, if you don't get all A's, you don't need to get all A's in OSSM. Your grades can dip a little. I mean, you know, it's expected. And I, yeah. if you're like really smart and you get all A's in OSSM, more power to you, dude. Like, I gotta respect it. But I, I expect, like, I had my grades drop. My grades dropped a little bit. I thought I was like all A's before, before high school. And then, no dive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Same, same. <laughs> Yeah, no, even if your grades drop, I still recommend taking all the classes you find interesting, but just don't like overload yourself with like 10 classes. Just take like, an extra like elective that you find cool or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, don't stress yourself. I mean, all the same classes are meant, uh, stress you out a lot. You know, so you gotta find that good work life balance of like, you know, do your classes, but also like have fun. You know, it's almost the same. You're a high schooler, you look out like what? 16, 17, 18, when you're asked to seven, those are like the best years of your teenage, your best teenage years. I hesitate to call them the best years <laughs> of your life because you're at OS of seven, but you know, they're pretty good teenage years, you know. Uh, yeah, take some extra should. classes, but you know, don't take too much that you're missing out on all the fun of OS of seven, all the, like the fun, especially because you live with your, all your buddies. And that's a, that's a video topic for the future about the dorm life, but yeah, don't stretch yourself out too much living there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean, but like, I feel like regardless, it's going to be really, really hard to find that balance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's even possible. I don't think it's really possible. It's just like maybe mitigating how much you suffer at that point. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, uh, Especially if you look at the uh, credit hours. Oh, taking per semester. yeah, I completely forgot to mention it. But when looking at Oh, yeah, I was looking at all the schedule the uh, before we did this recording, and I I pulled up my calculator and all, and August his schedule at least if you count up the individual hours he's in class, is like twenty eight the first semester, thirty three the second semester, twenty eight again, for the third semester with a mentorship. That's like a job you do like oh, at least four hours a week. Also requires four hours minimum, and you know he's so he's hustling. He's He's doing research and all, and then 20 hours the last semester with the mentorship, but everybody takes it easy the, the uh, last semester, so you know, take that as you will. It's, it's the last semester, the senior year. But if we look at that, August is taking an average 27 credit hours at OSSM average, give or take. But the average college student takes 15, even the OSSM prides itself on college level courses. Looking at that number alone, that's crazy, dude. Like, I don't know yeah, how like you maintain your sanity. Some people took even more classes and even harder classes. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. It's insane. It's insane. And they wonder why I, we all want to drop out every, like, day. <laughs> yeah. Why is my mental health terrible? I wonder. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I understand that they need us to take seven hours to graduate, but, like, seven college hours is a bit crazy. I understand why, but it's still really crazy, especially in terms of expectations for us. 
Yeah. Because we're the <clears throat> best and brightest in the state. <laughs> and I say that quote completely, like, ironically, because you see the amount of dumb stuff we do. Thank God, you will. But yeah, it's, it's stressful. It's stressful, especially the number of hours. Yeah. Like, when I heard out, when I started doing the math, I, had, I was like, oh, man, that's a, that's a lot of credit hours. Oh, wow, I'm never going to get sleep. You know, things like that. Yeah, that's crazy. And I feel bad. I feel bad for the, uh, this is going off on a tangent. But I understand OSIP is, like, really hard to do online because you don't get that OSIP experience, but you're still taking the same amount of classes. So, man, that's, that has to be really tough on our, our juniors and our, like, yeah, what, I don't what know grade how grand big juniors? Big. You know, like the two classes before us? Maybe. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know the terminology. Yeah. I mean, we got a bit of the online, but then again, that was last semester. So it was like sort of, I guess, chill at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, fun times, fun times. Now I feel like I'm an old man on his little rocking chair, reminiscing of uh, the stressful old good old days. <laughs> Anthony, I'm pretty sure you're younger than our juniors. <laughs> oh, funny story. Uh, I don't know how much information I can leak, but my uh, my sister's roommate, she's going to, you know, my sister's going to older son, right? Uh, her roommate is older than me by like three weeks. And it's actually like really funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. 16 feels so young. It's like <laughs> 16 and going into this hellish environment, like, boy. I, mean, I feel bad for all the juniors because you know they don't know what they're getting themselves into because those of them i'm not going to lie they do a really like okay job at like advertising how hard the classes actually are you know they tell you it's hard but i used to think that if i stayed up to midnight it was a pretty bad night but then whoopsies i fell asleep at 3 a.m on my chair again <laughs> fun time uh yes that chair I... was your chair was really nice that chair was really right nice. it was yeah. very conducive for falling asleep like oh man uh, a deep lovely slumber Ooh. it's like oh doing work doing work oh man i'm gonna close my eyes but, oh what 5 a.m mm, finish my work okay go to bed yeah like i at least my senior year i think while well, doing my home i fell asleep on my chair doing homework more times than I fell asleep on a bed, at least for like the first semester. Probably like, same. Yeah, dude, I remember like, you and I. Oh man, that was ooh. Like my neck has been hurting recently, and I think it has to do something with that. Like my neck's really? fine. Yeah, I see. I mean, it's not too bad. I just need to like stretch it, but it just hurts like sometimes. And like, wow, fun. I think I'd like to blame Moses for that. Yeah, yes. I could have solved back. it by sleeping or like better. <laughs> but you know, like I, I 100% expect like in like the care package they give out to like the juniors to get like a little neck thing, you know, the neck cushion pillow. Oh. Dude, that's an investment. Wait, no, can they even use that? Because the chairs are so short, you know? Ah, oh, crap, you're right. I guess I mean, like, maybe like, on a wall. You know, whenever you're super tired, you find a way, right? You can just fall asleep like that. Yeah, fall asleep like, uh, on the floor. Yeah. But yeah, uh, speaking of like hard classes, so uh, from your time at OSSM, <laughs> What what are the I guess three of the hardest classes you've taken? Any like provide some insight on them? All right, three hardest classes. Uh, would probably have to be modern physics, theoretical physics, and what's it? That's what's it? Right, yeah. humanities. Yeah, humanities. Humanities. <laughs> Maybe humanities as a whole, but probably what's it in particular. Yeah. So like the reason I found modern so hard was because it was just super hard to visualize. Because, like, we're talking about, like, because modern's all about, like, speed of light stuff and how that, like, breaks normal physics. And so you sort of just have to throw, like, almost, like, a lot of what you know out the window and, like, totally reimagine how you think of it. And so I don't think I, I just did not think I got that, especially since I kept falling asleep during class. So, like, maybe that was it. That's probably it. That's, that definitely did not help. But it was just hard to, like... I guess, set up, like, visualize and, like, imagine, like, the way, I, I guess, properly comprehend it. Because I couldn't visualize it. There we go. And so, I guess it was, at that point, it just became super hard to, like, set up how to, like, to do problems. And then it was downhill from there. And that's probably why I struggled so much in that class. 
but I think I still ended with a B. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, that's, oh, a fat that's curve? A big win. Big win for the board. That's, <laughs> it required big... fat curves, but that's, I don't care. I, I love Bachman's curve. I love Dr. Bachman's curve. Test very corrections very good, very good. plus curve. Oh my <laughs> god. Other, I would not be alive. Other, I would not be here otherwise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in an alternate timeline where he didn't give curves, I'd be at O triple T. Ah, uh, fun times. Uh, okay, wait, uh, so next work. class. Uh, next class would be theoretical. That's the second class I mentioned. Uh, even though I only took that for like two weeks or something like that, a week or two, I don't know. Something about that class, I just didn't understand anything. Day one, it was so weird. I, I don't even know. Anthony, what did you think of that class? Because um, you were there as well. <laughs> okay, for my two weeks, I have my notebook with theoretical. And I was looking at it the other day, you know, and I was like, what is going on? I remember it was like some water thing. So it was like water in like a, like a triangle. And I was looking and I was like, I don't know what this English means. I know the words. I don't know what they mean altogether. I have to, like, I respect the people who survived theoretical and like made it to the class, got a good grade. And like, well, geniuses. They have to be genius. Like Einstein. I heard it got easier. Uh, for, like, yeah. over the uh, course of the four or five months. And I believe the tests were like, uh, was it open note or was it take home? It, take home, I believe. I heard it's yeah. take home. I think it was pretty lenient with the tests as well because the concepts are so hard. I mean, it's like how people say with open book exams, they get harder because they're open book or like take home in this case. But I mean, it's the content's hard already. So I don't think you need to make it any harder. Yeah. yeah. And then last class, West Civ. I mean, mm-hmm. That one's a given, you know, like the tests are just, man, they're brutal. They're brutal for sure. And like just the sheer amount of content you have to know. And sometimes you're just like whipping out, like, oh, this back, boom, 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 connect the dots. And then it's like, oh my God, I feel so smart. Or this you like BS something and you get credit for it. You're like, oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> but then when you don't, you're like, man, I'm sort of stupid. Oh, man. Was Civ was actually, I thought West Civ was like a, it was hard for sure, but I, I liked the content and we got some good inside jokes from it as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and I want to, I want to continue that. Uh, you have like a top three favorite classes from OSSM oh, like, that you enjoyed the most? Top three favorite classes? Holy crap. I can't believe you just hit me from out of nowhere. Hey man, it, it's called a segue. Yeah. I always felt segue wrong. Like when I, Visualized it like a, <laughs> like a, it's yeah, it's weird. Segway way, segway, segway. All yeah, right, need... so favorite classes, okay. Um, so one would probably have to be A and P, mm-hmm. two would have to be oh, this one's this one's some sort of tough. Um, I say you like gen general physics, right? Oh, and general then, physics. Yeah, and then three. Okay, this might be a this might be a weird sort of sort of weird pick, surprising one maybe. Oh, uh, world lit. World literature. Okay, okay, I'll save that one for last. Uh, so number one was a uh, A and P. Mm-hmm. I mean that one was okay. The it was fun because of the professor and the class people yeah. in it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah. The content was also like interesting because you know it wasn't anything like crazy, like complicated or hard, but it was interesting. So you know, it kept I was engaged in that way, and then the professor was fun. So, boom, everything the perfect storm. So it was just a fun class. And mm-hmm. then two, what did I say again? It was a uh, Gen Fizz, right? Yeah, Gen, Gen Fizz, Fizz. Yeah. Uh, Gen Fizz. It was. I mean, that's sort of an intro to like what you'll eventually later learn in like mechanics and E and M. Just like a, you know, just like a sampler, like a taster. Yeah. So that was interesting because you get to learn like a lot of like, bur- different concepts, like shallowly, but you get to get a taste of a lot of different things. So that was sort of nice. And then World Lit. Okay, so here's the reason why I picked World Lit. I, 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 I actually just sort of like the readings. Like e- even though I fell asleep in almost every class, right, during discussion, I, I like like the I like the readings that he gave, like the books. Oh, like yeah. The, Iliad, Mahabharata, Journey to the West, those are actually fun to read. Yeah. And also some of the articles he sent were actually sort of interesting. So like, even though I did fall asleep during class, right? Like I actually enjoyed the readings he gave. So maybe like, if you can just not fall asleep during class, you know, you, know, you might actually enjoy that class. 
I, I, yeah, I enjoyed it and like the work he gave. What you say should be like an honorary fourth? That's, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that as well. I didn't yeah. want to put two humanities though, because I like, it's like man, it feels <laughs> weird. It feels At weird. At STEM school? Humanities. What? Oh, no. Mind blown. I struggle with humanities more. I can't pick two of them as my favorite. But yeah, East Asian honorary up there as well, because that was just a very fun and chill. Yeah. Well, uh, that concludes our, I guess, our episode today. So uh, thank you, August, for coming on to From C Two Hundred Four. You know, coming on again. <laughs> uh, man, I, we gotta do some more episodes, guys. It's fun. And uh, I guess for now, this is uh, From C Two Hundred Four signing off. <laughs>